What if you could walk around inside of your favorite TV and movie homes? Well, now with this channel, you can. Today, we're going to explore every nook and cranny of the Ponderosa Ranch from Bonanza. And as usual, you'll see views not possible on the show. Hi, I'm Marina Coates. Welcome to Behind the Scenes, where we get up close and personal with all your favorite TV and movie homes. Today, we'll be touring both the main floor and the upstairs from Bonanza. Let's get started. We'll begin with an overhead view to help us get our bearings. This is the entrance to the home. This is the living room with the huge fireplace here. This is where the staircase to the upper floor is. Over here is the den. This is the dining area, and back here is the kitchen. Now on to the living room. The home changed so much over the course of the series that I had to choose a season and stick with it. I chose season two. In this season, we have a red striped sofa here with a sofa table behind it, a leather chair in this corner, a blue high back wing chair here, and a chunky coffee table in the center. There's a set of smaller tufted leather chairs over here with a large table in the middle, and next to the stairs is a large gun rack with a bookcase below. There's an amazing vaulted ceiling with wood beams. But what really makes this room is that enormous, breathtaking fireplace. As a fan of the show said, it was large enough to park a Buick in there. <laughs> it's the scale of the fireplace that really makes the room. Everything about it is large. The height, the width, the large stones, the mantle, the longhorn leather mount, the andirons, and of course, the firebox where you park your Buick. I'm a sucker for westerns, and in particular, the set design. And this particular home checks all of my boxes. We'll tour just the living room for now. Later, we'll tour the entire home in one fell swoop. In the entry, we see a large table here, a grandfather clock, and a chair. There were times when other objects would appear here, such as these fencing swords, because they were needed for a scene. In the den, in season one, there was a window here, and the bookcase was behind the desk. That later changed, perhaps to match the exterior. The window is then here, and the bookcase moved to this wall. Ben's desk was a handsome work of art. Thick and rustic, with a curve carved out for his green leather desk chair. There was a map of the Ponderosa behind him beside the window, and a globe underneath. We only got to see this much of the den, but judging by the exterior, there must have been a door here. We'll tour the entryway and the den now. I love Ben Cartwright's den. It fit the home and it fit his character. It was said of Lauren Green, who of course played Ben, that he was very much like his character in real life. How fitting then that he built a replica of this very home for himself in Mesa, Arizona. I was curious what Ben's view would be from behind this desk where we so often saw him seated. So we'll end this part of the tour with that very view. 
Many scenes took place in the dining room, and compared to the rest of the set, this room changed the least. There was the large Spanish-style table and carved chairs, a red chandelier that was sometimes there and sometimes not, depending on the scene, a buffet in this corner, and a set of shelves lining this wall that leads down to the kitchen. And then there's those incredible windows. Again, large in scale, all trimmed out with paneling underneath, and shutters secured with iron latches. I loved when they were open for a scene and we were able to see outside. It made it feel more like a real place. Originally, I thought that this one might be a door to more of the home, but then I saw it open in a few scenes and also noticed that it has the same panel on the bottom as the other window that can't be opened, so it's a window. Most of the home shows rustic elements, like the plastered walls, chunky furniture, and beams. But here in the dining room, we also see more refined items, such as the delicate china. It was always fun to see them decked out in Western gear and yet holding tiny teacups in their hands. In a moment, we'll tour the entire main floor. But for now, we'll just explore the dining room and then on to the kitchen. In the dining room, there is a door here. It was sometimes shown as being the entrance to a guest bedroom. However, although shown with a window, as you can see from this overhead view, that would not be possible. Perhaps that's why later on they showed the guest bedroom upstairs. And finally, there's a hallway here that leads to the kitchen. We didn't get to see the kitchen very often, but wow, it does not disappoint. The Cartwrights would enter the kitchen from this direction after leaving the dining room. For that to happen, the kitchen would be situated like this, and yet we're shown this door as being here, which isn't possible. This happens a lot in TV homes. In fact, with every single TV home I've done so far. With TV homes, we're asked to suspend disbelief, and I am more than willing to in this case because I love this home. You'll notice that I moved that door to where it actually would end up being. I'm assuming this portion of the home was where Hop Singh lived. Actor Victor Sen Young portrayed the cook Hop Singh. Victor got his start in show business while working for a chemical company. He went to 20th Century Fox with the intent of selling them a flame-proofing material, but wound up making a screen test instead. That led him to being cast in the movie Charlie Chan in Honolulu and many other films. We'll take a spin around the kitchen and then tour the whole main floor before we head upstairs. What is it about Westerns that makes them so appealing? I know my husband was a bit surprised when he found out how much I love them. In his mind, it didn't fit my M.O. But I've loved them since I was a little girl. It's all about the feeling and the mood that they convey. Sure, none of us lived back then, but that's part of the attraction. What would it have been like? 
What was life really like back then? And yet it goes even beyond that. The set design had very similar components. Lots of wood, rough-hewn logs, pine walls, and overhead beams. Log cabins with chinking, even wooden sidewalks outside the stores. The fireplaces built with large uncut stones with flames blazing inside full of pots and pans ready for them to cook their meals there. There are colorful hand-woven rugs and blankets, leather furniture, and for some reason there's always an abundance of red. They slept beside the campfire making a bed on the ground with coyotes howling in the distance. Can't you just smell that campfire and the smoky taste of the food cooked on it? There was a wildness to the land, rough, unhewn, lawless, and dangerous. You could take any storyline and add that component, and it immediately became a nail-biter. Not that I'd want to live in that kind of environment, but it almost always is entertaining to watch. I think part of the fascination with these shows is wondering how we would have fared under similar circumstances. Could we have lived like that? Would we have measured up? How would our stories have gone? The Old West, where perhaps the most essential skill was being quick on the draw. There were horses, sheriffs, cattle rustlers, campfires, log cabins, coyotes, and land. Lots and lots of land, as far as the eye can see. Raising enough crops or cattle just to survive or, God willing, to thrive. For me, that's the intrigue of the Wild West. Those are the things that conjure up that Western mood for me and why I rarely turn down the chance to watch one. I'm sure you all have your own reasons. I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. Before we venture upstairs, let's take a look at some of the great westerns with their mouth-watering set design. In these steals from famous westerns, a common theme begins to emerge. The set design and cinematography simply steal the show. If you're like me, I often miss the plot because I'm too busy poring over the homes and the design going on in the background. Set design helps create the mood of the story, and westerns provide a stunning example of this principle. But to create that mood, they also rely heavily on the cinematographers. Look at these great shots. The angles are great, but the lighting also plays a major role in the feelings evoked from them. These are principles you can easily incorporate into your own homes. After all, you're the set designer there. You're the cinematographer. You control the lighting that creates the mood that you want in a room. You just need to learn a few techniques to get started. That is just one of the many design takeaways that we can get from the cinema. If you want to learn how to bring the design secrets from the cinema into your own home, you'll want to check out my other series on this channel called Cinematically Inspired Design, where we learn how to do just that. It's not rocket science. In fact, it's pretty easy, and I'll guide you step by step. Now on to the tour of the upstairs of the Ponderosa. But before we can do that, we first have to look at the exterior to see exactly where those bedrooms might be. We know that each Cartwright, both father and sons, had their own rooms. That's four bedrooms right there, but we also know they had a guest bedroom up there as well, so that makes five bedrooms total. Shows often reuse sets to portray different rooms. On the Waltons, the girls' room was also the parents' room. On Bewitched, the Dan was also Tabitha's room. But I think Bonanza might win the prize for the set most often reused. You'll notice in these images that Ben's room is also Little Joe's room right down to the blue bottle of cologne on the dresser. But it was also the guest room on several occasions. Now, as for the layout, when people enter Ben's room, they're coming at it straight on. So it sits at the end of a hallway. When people enter the other rooms, they come in from the side. As for the guest bedroom upstairs, we see it sometimes situated like this, with the door right next to a large window. So this is just one possible scenario for the layout of the rooms. However, remember me saying that we would need to look at the exterior to see exactly where those bedrooms could have actually been? 
Well, like every TV home I've done so far, the interior does not line up with the exterior. And even the exterior changed. You can see the differences in these two shots, which were both shown in the same season. We see a window here, but that's in the vaulted ceiling of the living room directly below, so there could be no bedroom there. The home ends here, so we know that no bedrooms can be down this way. That leaves this area and this one for the bedrooms. It doesn't exactly fit over the main floor, but it's about as close as we're gonna get. Let's start with a tour of Ben's room. Ben's room changed even within season two, but this is one of the setups that we were shown. A little background on Lauren Green, who played Ben Cartwright. When Lauren got the role of Ben, he had to take horse riding lessons. He must have picked it up easily because he looked like a natural on horseback. At first, the character of Ben Cartwright was rather stern. Lauren recommended that his character be changed to have a warmer relationship with his son. He based it on the relationship he had with his own father. Luckily, the change was allowed and he became the wise, loving father we all know. Coming up, a tour of the entire upstairs. The next room is Adam's room. Prunell Roberts played Adam, the firstborn son of Ben. He enjoyed poetry and playing the guitar. In real life, Prunell was theater trained and had served in the Marine Corps. Before Bonanza, he had been in Desire Under the Elms. He left the show at the end of season six, and later he went on to star in Trapper John, M.D. Ben's second son was Eric, better known as Haas, played by Dan Blocker. Haas was the name his older brother Adam called him as a child, and it stuck. The part of Haas was created specifically for Dan Blocker by the producer David Dortort. Dan played football in college and was an excellent boxer. He was later offered a chance to play professional football but turned it down to further pursue acting. Sadly, Dan Blocker died unexpectedly at the young age of 43. The show only lasted one season after his passing. Ben's youngest son, affectionately called Little Joe, was played by Michael Landon. Michael was only 22 when he first appeared on the screen as Joe Cartwright. He would later go on to write and direct several episodes of Bonanza. The year after the show was canceled, he went on to produce and star in Little House on the Prairie, another home I'll be doing in the future. After that, he starred in Highway to Heaven. Now let's walk the halls of the entire upstairs. What TV and movie homes would you like to see next? Let me know in the comments. As for today, that's a wrap. See you next time on Behind the Scenes.